everyone. Hey, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I wanted to jump on here real quick. There have been so many questions since the release of this gorgeous Christmas tree skirt from Designs by Juju. I just wanted to pop on here and answer some of these questions because a lot of people have asked these questions and you may have wondered about some of these yourself. So, I will just get right to this. If you have not yet watched the first two videos of part one and part two showing how I did my process to make this Christmas tree skirt, once you see those, some of these questions and answers may make a lot of sense. Okay, so let's get to it. The biggest question of all that I have received and Designs by Juju customer service has received is, can this be done on a single needle? And I made it on the multi-needle. I also own a single needle, but the answer is definitively yes, you absolutely can make this on a single needle. You're just going to go through more thread changes, so it will take you a little bit longer stitch out time for each block. That's okay. It can be done. A lady posted in our Power Tools with Thread Facebook group a beautiful tree skirt that looks just like this that she did on her Janome 550, which is a single needle machine. So you certainly can do this. As a matter of fact, all of the sample tree skirts that you see in the pictures on the Designs by Juju website were done on single needle machines. So you can do this if you have a single needle. This is a six by 10. You absolutely can. If you've never used your embroidery machine before, I would recommend you start with a mug rug just so you get the feel of it to kind of understand what's going on. But there's an assumption with this project that you have already got a few beginner projects under your belt, okay? However, there are detailed instructions. The instruction PDF that you get with this file is 95 pages long. 95 pages, you guys. And they all have pictures. Every step has a picture and it tells you exactly what to do. And if you're not sure what colors to use, there are also thread charts included with the project from Designs by Juju. So, if you feel like me, sometimes I'm just like, well, how hard can it be? And I just jump in with both feet. This is the project for that. But it is probably recommended that maybe you start with a mug rug or something just to go ahead and get the idea of placement line, putting your batting down, trim the batting away after the tack down, and then putting your fabric on and all that. But if you follow instructions really well, printed instructions, you're gonna be able to do this no problem. It's a lot easier than it looks. That is gonna depend on, and this is every, every quilting and embroidery project. There are different kinds of fabrics that are out there. If you buy your fabric from a quilt shop, so you're purchasing quilt quality fabrics that are running anywhere between 10 and 12.50 a yard. You probably do not need to wash your fabrics. Unless you make it in red, you might want to do a cold vinegar bath set. The same idea as putting your Easter eggs in vinegar water so that the color sets. It's the exact same idea, okay? Reds as a rule Sometimes can run. If you bought non quilt shop quality fabrics, you may want to wash your fabrics first. Not because of shrinkage, but only because of the fact that they might bleed. Now, I have absolutely no intention of washing this ever, all right? I will never put this in a washing machine. The threads will not run because they are poly. The fabric is white cotton. I don't have to worry about that at all, but I don't have small children that are gonna dump anything on this. This is gonna be decorative, going over a tree that's gonna sit on a table, 
and it will be protected in plastic bags throughout the year until I take it out again. So I don't have any thoughts that anything will make this dirty. It's not going to go on the floor. So if your tree skirt is going to go on the floor or it's going to have kids stomping on it, which could happen if you ship it off to your grandchildren or something, then you may want to go ahead and pre-wash the fabric. And if you're using red as a background, if you're using white or blue or something like that, you really don't have to, but it's completely up to you. It's not that big of a deal. The only one I worry about is red turning anything pink, but I think it should be fine. In video number one, I showed you how I measured my fabric and how I measured my SF-101. If you do your fabric and your SF-101 the same way, I used about two yards, maybe two and a half. Just to be safe, get three yards if you're going to do it the way I did. That's going to allow for boo-boos. So if you're making it the way Designs by Juju says to do it, I would get as much SF-101 as is called for in the pattern for the fabric so that you have enough for each and every block. So to pre-shrink SF-101, you can hold a steam iron over it and just kind of run it over it. Don't touch it because you don't want to iron it to your ironing surface, but just hold a steady steam over it the whole time. Again, that is if you are going to think that it might be washed. Mine's never going to be washed. I did not pre-shrink a thing. I didn't pre-wash a thing. This is going to stay as is for the life of the project. If you think that this tree skirt might be washed, then you might want to pre-shrink your SF-101. I've seen comments in the Facebook group that you don't need to do that. You know what? I recommend do a test and find out. Y'all, I've never used Tyrael Magic. I, I can't speak to it. The whole point of using SF-101 is because there are so many blocks that have heavy satin stitching in them in this project. So let me take the camera off and get up real close and I wanna show you the difference. I made an extra block without SF-101 on it so I want to show you the difference of using SF-101 with your project or not. So here's the piece without SF-101. And we've got some bubbles in the fabric right here. Y'all, unless bubbles are accompanied with a bathtub and a glass of wine, I'm not a fan, okay? So that's the only thing. See, there's a little extra. See that bubble right there? It's not something to die over, but it adds a little extra volume to the project that you normally would not see. So that is without SF-101. Here's the same block with SF-101. There are no bubbles at all in this project. Now there might be puckers a little bit. I mean, you cannot get away from that at all. It's just, it just won't happen. It's just the nature of the fiber itself little bit here and there, but it's not enough to take away from the beauty of the project. No, absolutely not. You can take these designs directly from the download from Designs by Juju and pop them onto a USB stick and go directly to your machine and stitch them out. The only reason I used the Imbrilliant software was to inspect the designs as an embroiderer, I like to do that. It lets me know ahead of time what to expect. I can read through the instructions and whatnot. I just really prefer to show myself and my viewers what they can expect when we go through a project and can see, like in the wedge that I showed in the first video, that there was no applique in there. So it just is something that I do for me I feel like it makes me a better embroiderer. The files come with detailed color charts and instructions so that you do not need any additional software at all in order to be able to do this project. Absolutely not. 
In the first video, I showed how you can use a cutting machine to cut out the applique, how to create SVG files using Embrilliance embroidery software, but you don't have to do that. The reason the design has a placement line is for you to be able to take a square of fabric and lay it out over the placement line, and then the next stitch is the tack down line and that tack down line secures that extra applique fabric to your project and then it will stop and you can take your scissors and trim around the tack down line and then the final satin stitch will occur. You do not need a cutting machine in order to be able to make this project. A lot of you have emailed me or messaged me or put on Facebook that you want to use the fabrics that I used. So I listed all the fabrics that I used and then some underneath each video in the description box and it's identical. And that's because the fabrics that I used by the time the video was only like 12 or 15 hours old, all those fabrics were gone. So I went to an extra step to go out to various different quilting online websites to find alternate fabrics that I would use if I had not used the fabrics that I did. I also want to let you know it is August 9th, 2022 and Reb's Fab Stash is in the process of putting together kits as soon as she gets all the fabric in and everything put together. They will be available probably later this month. So those are fabrics also that she is putting together that I would have chosen had I not used the fabrics that I did for my project. You guys, that is a one inch paper tape from 3M. I bought it on Amazon. It's in my Amazon store. You can go to amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread. That's my Amazon store and I have it in there. Y'all, you can get 12 rolls of this for like $10. It's great, and it's very, very close to what you find in quilt shops that sell embroidery supplies. So there's a little tidbit and a tip for you. I'm always looking for comparable products that I can purchase that make my embroidery work out exactly the same, but maybe save a couple of pennies in the process. Okay, you guys, that's it. I hope that answered your questions. Please watch video number one and video number two. Video number one goes through how I prep everything, how I put it in the multi-needle, how I program the multi-needle, how I cut out the fabrics and whatnot. But then video number two is all about assembly. And I've got some garment sewing tips and tricks in there to show you how to be able to make a beautiful, gorgeous family heirloom and have it come out super pretty. All right, you guys, that's it. Please subscribe to my channel, PowerToolsWithThread.com, for additional tips and tricks, and we will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.